So, did you know that by population of native speakers, Bangla is the sixth language in the world? So, we pretty much outnumber hundreds of other languages. And by talking and talking about Bangla software, we also had a great start. It started in late 80s. We had our Bangla keyboard, Bangla fonts, and from age-old traditional printing system, we moved forward to desktop publishing. And the interesting thing is, it even started before the birth of web. Uh, well, don't get confused with web and internet here. It, it's, it was uh, 1991 when the first first ever web page uh, in the world was published by um, by Tim Lee uh, actually so uh, we had a pretty go uh, pretty good start so I'll just move forward uh, ten years uh, a decade uh, to see that what happens next because we had a great start and we had we now have a great hope that we are going to end up uh, something great, right? So this is web in 2000, all grown up and kicking. And we now have Yahoo GeoCities. Uh, we are publishing our, every one of us are publishing uh, our own websites, maybe with cheesy animated graphics, or comic sense fonts, but whatever. It's like everyone is Tim Berners-Lee now, right? So what happened to the Bangla software? Looks like we're stuck. We're still in the beginning. We have only those keyboards, fonts, and just desktop publishing. So what actually happened? The thing is, our pioneer, our pioneers who started this, uh, instead of looking forward to more innovation, improvement, they got focused uh, in making money with these tools. They went through all the travels of, of copywriting and patenting their tools so that nobody can come forward and carry out from what they started. And for this, for years, we had to pay to be able to write in our language, OK? And even worse, we had to pay to read what others uh, have written, uh, because uh, those fonts were proprietary too. Uh, they came with those software packages. And it's like everybody there had their own standards. Everybody was hoping that. Uh, they will win. Uh, so uh, that was a messy situation. Mm, there were incompatibilities between different Bangla softwares or even worse. There were incompatibilities between different versions of the same Bangla software. It was like vendor locking at its worst. Uh, it was like locking yourself up in your own prison. So, but that needs to be broken, right? And I'm really grateful that Tim Berners-Lee didn't make that mistake. He didn't patent the web thing. So the world is here now. So in 2003, we founded Omicron Lab and uh, started developing Avro with just one goal to provide an open and free alternative Bangla input method. Okay? We believed that the ability to write in your own language falls under kind of fundamental rights.
that it has to be open and it has to be accessible by all. Uh, we believe that there has to be a free option uh, to express yourself uh, in your own language because that's one of the basic building blocks of a civilized society. And um, so here goes uh, the tagline of our uh, project, let language be free. We started uh, to develop a free Bangla typing tool, but the thing is we didn't stop there. We uh, moved forward and designed and developed uh, open and free Bangla fonts, uh, Bangla spell checker, various other tools to make it a complete package uh, so that uh, everyone can uh, feel right at home when they write uh, uh, in Bangla, okay? Um, when we started, for obvious reasons, we targeted uh, the Windows platform, but later we moved to Linux, Mac, um, even iOS, and um, we made an extension for Google Chrome. And initially, it were all free words, just free words. But uh, three years ago, we released everything under uh, open source in Mozilla public license. So here is our public repositories. Uh, you can access to pretty much, you can have access to pretty much anything we have worked on so far. So it already has been uh, 10 years since we started, right? And I must say that it has been a, it has been an amazing journey. Uh, we observed how that little idea of openness, how that little tool, that little software can create a huge ripple effect. Of users went from hundreds to millions. And besides home users, it has been used by our government uh, to create the largest national ID card uh, project of our country by commercials and non-profit sectors. The thing is, which was once limited to desktop publishing only, which was once special job to type in Bangla, which was, uh, what there was, uh, what there was training centers uh, on how to type in Bangla, it all suddenly became everyone's cup of tea. And since then, we have seen tremendous growth in Bangla users on social media, blogging platforms, and there, there, was, there has been a huge burst in local content development. But today, I want to share the most beautiful part of this experience. It made us believe that there is no right person for the job, okay? Let me explain. Uh, to, um, for a starter, Omicron Lab team is the worst combination for what we do, okay? Uh, even worse than them. So I graduated from a medical college. So technically I'm a physician, by, but I write code. None of us had any formal education in linguistics. And the guy among us who did a tremendous job uh, in designing and developing those Bangla fonts had no prior knowledge, formal education on typography or fine arts. And it was my wife who actually curated 300,000 Bangla words to make the first dictionary for us, which works as, a, as the heart of our transliteration and spell checker systems. Okay, and later a group of bloggers and online writers came forward to uh, voluntarily contribute to that, uh, improve it, edit it. So it made us believe that if you're just open to ideas, if you're keen to learn whatever new things come along the way, you'll be just fine. We did what we had to do. We did it continuously consistently, without losing hope, without giving up, without thinking about the effects, without expecting anything actually, uh, without uh, worrying about the ripple it creates. And that's the thing that matters, I think. So, 
how deep the rabbit hole goes actually. The thing is, the more we dig deeper, the more it reveals itself. So no matter how much work uh, or how much time we put on this, uh, this little project, uh, we know that uh, we barely just scratched the surface so far because there is, there is still a lot to do in natural language processing field for Bangla. Let me put it this way. We have seen the revolution in personal computers. Then we have seen the revolution in smartphones. And the next big things are actually going to be smaller, but smarter. Think about smart wearable gadgets, OK? Think about Google Glass. Or think about Internet of Things. Or think about personal robotics. The thing is, these new technologies are coming with a whole new level of experience, with a whole new level of uh, new ways, more natural uh, and human ways, how we interact with them. And that will not be limited to traditional keyboards. So ask yourself, are we doing really good, actually? Are we keeping the pace up? But at the same time, I don't uh, want to be hopeless, because there's a thing that I learned from Abro. We are young. Uh, when I started the project, I was 19. We are novice, but we didn't hesitate to face the challenges. And if we can do it, anybody can do it, right? So while doing, Thank you. So while doing all these works deep inside, I'm curiously waiting for the next guy who will come forward someday and take it all to the next level. Or just he'll just tell us that step aside because I believe I can do better than you. And I also like to believe that that guy is out there somewhere hiding in the crowd chasing his dreams just like we did 10 years ago. And if that happens, I think we have nothing to worry about. Because I don't believe in extraordinary people anymore. Rather, I believe in ordinary people doing extraordinary things because they are desperate. Thank you. Thank you.